let's start. Uh, hi, uh, my name is Quentin Haddam. Uh, I'm the CEO of a company called Clever Cloud. And this is my day-to-day -day job. Uh, I'm, I'm the guy who makes the application running because at Clever Cloud, we keep application online. You just git push your application and uh, we make them run. We fix the security, restart when there, are, there is a crash, auto-scale application. It's so cool. And in fact, uh, the way we do that learn us a lot about how developer works because we learn about the process, the technology they use. So we travel around the world to give back to the community and so about what we find. And today I want to speak with you about streaming because this is a very um, powerful thing in, in our industry and we need to, to speak about how streaming can affect your development. There is two main reasons today we need to focus on streaming. The first is data is becoming bigger and bigger. Uh, it's true for many things. In fact, web page are, are becoming so fat, uh, but also your file and database uh, are becoming with NoSQL and all this kind of stuff very big. And we cannot just sit down waiting for the data is transferring. We, we need to act on data while it's transferring. We, we, we need to, to interact with the users while in, in, in push something onto the application. So the first thing is data bigger. And the other thing is we are using a lot of permanent connection today. Uh, long time ago, we, we were application, we would do like, I need something, the application compute, we have the result. And basically, with, if you think about that, is the basic functions of internet. An HTTP request is, okay, I need something, or I push you something, just compute the answer, and turn me back. But it's a reality for developer that connection is becoming persistent. Uh, who is using WebSockets? And do you have a look on what HTTP2 is? HTTP2 is basically permanent connection embedded a lot of data with a lot of streams, with frames. You can prioritize what is the data you want to push at first. You, you have so many things you can do with HTTP2, but it's permanent connection. So right now, we have to act on string while it's happening. But we can do this with simple HTTP 1 connection, for example. Uh, if you take an HTTP request, you have a verb, resource, headers, and a body, okay? Everybody is okay with the rest HTTP. When you're using your favorite web framework, every time it's, it manages all the requests of the user from the memory because it cages all the data in the memory, working on this, computes the answer, and puts the response back to the user. But if you are thinking about that, if you are doing a store system, or maybe a, a new system for video encoding, when you are plotting a 20 gigabyte of uh, data file, uh, what, what are you doing to store it? If you put it all in the memory, it would be a bad day. Yeah, what's, what's framework do automatically, many of the time, is say, okay, we will create a temp file to store the data, and we will manage out. The problem is, temp file is on the file system. And as an nesting provider, I have to say, I hate file system. When I say, I hate file system, you know. File system is something I don't like because it's POSIX. POSIX is ACID, so it's a single point of failure. Uh, you cannot have, you, you know, there is no silver bullet in file system industry. You cannot have a, a multiple uh, replicated uh, quickest file system over the year in a cluster. It, it's a unicorn, it doesn't exist. It's a ninja unicorn with a parrot on it, in fact. So, you cannot have this. 
So you have to do something with the file. If we think about that, client upload a file. We create a temporary file on one server of our application cluster. So if the server dies, the file is lost. But it's a point. Then we send it to the backend, and the answer the client all is right. The problem doing this is we send the file two times, and it's a 20 gigabyte file. The client quiz will probably time out before we, we finish the storing. And the, store, the storage will be successful, but the client have an unsuccessful answer. Oh, it's not a problem. We can store it in the temporary file, say the client it's OK, and upload in the a, in a backend. Yes, but it, if it fails, the client think it's OK. So it's, it's really complicated to do the thing like that. It's not a good idea. It doesn't compute. What we need to do is client uploads a file, we directly stream it to the back end, and we can answer the query. So this is acting on streams. And streams are cool. So you can see in a very simple application like storing a file, you can use streams. OK, how we do in classic Java management? We create two file input streams. Uh, so we have a file input stream and a file output stream. Uh, we can do a while. We read the file and we put it on the other. And finally, I want to close the file, even if there is an exception. A problem with that is performance are very poor. So we need to make some buffer everywhere. So buffer, buffer, buffer. And with this, you have the kind of bugs you have with a uh, split bug on SSL. It's, it's typically the kind of bug you have with buffer. You have to manage buffer. You have to manage exception. You have to manage uh, overflow. In fact, if you are thinking uh, just I want to write uh, as a Java, it's very low performances. Um, it's not modular. It's thread blocking, so you need to have only one thread to manage your stream. The code is very complicated to understand. There is no back pressure to say to the source, it's complicated, don't, don't give it to me more uh, thing. And the error handling is very bad. So, but the major problem is the I.O. management and the business code has mixed set together. So it's, it's very bad code. And when I have this kind of project on production, I can sleep at night. Because, you know, I'm just like, OK, it will fail. I'm pretty sure it will fail. We have to find a better way to do that. And to solve this, uh, what I prefer to do is to find a data structure to express the data management I am doing it. So. Functional programming has made many solutions to act on streams. The first solution uh, derivated from Haskell was the play iterative thing. Who is using play framework? So all the play framework network is based on play iterative at this time. And Play, there is also iterative in Scala Z, uh, but play iterative is basically simple to understand. An iterative is a way to manage a stream. It, it's like a receipt of how working on the stream. With iterative coming a numerator, there is data stream who produce the data. It's just something that outputs the data uh, every time. And there is something called a numerator within uh, kind of mix up of tools, cool tools to make the plumbery between the two. Uh, a very simple uh, example to start. Uh, if you are thinking uh, with the reactive manifesto words, uh, we can stream it into an iterative to group it by pair of word and print it. Okay? So my enumerator is basically something like uh, uh, the enumerator repeat 
uh, the, the, the data is a um, reactive manifesto word is just an array with all the word of the reactive manifesto and we randomly shuffle all the thing to put the data of the reactive manifesto out. What the fuck? Okay. And an iterati is this. Okay. Don't panic. Iterati is a native construction about how we manage the data. In fact, there are two things you have to understand with iterati. First, it's input. The input of an iterati can be an element. It's a parameterized type, okay? Can be empty, there is nothing to give you. And can be end of file, there is the end of the stream, okay? And the other thing you have to understand is the iterati state. An iterative state can be, it's done, we finish, can be, there is an error, it can be continuation. I have processed this data, give me the, the, the next one. If you're looking at the same word aggregation system we have, we have a very simple iterative with a function step. So the iterative say, I'm taking stream, string and I produce string, I have a function step, and the function step say there is previous and there is the input. And the input can match end of file, empty or element. If it's end of file, the iterati production is done. If there is empty, I'm just continue to, to do the same thing without adding anything. And if there is element, uh, I fold with the previous and um, uh, I, I can be done if the eternity is empty. So it's it's quite simple. And my eternity, I can group the pair of words with an enumerate point group at string. Okay, it's 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 this kind of thing you can have with enumerate. The, the function grouped, we build a new stream from a stream with an eternity. What's happened when we're using it? You can see all the words of the, the reactive manifesto are grouped by two and logged to the stream. Okay? But now what we can do is quite interesting. We can say I want to be sure of the size of what is handling by the stream. So, uh, I will create a new iterati which say, okay, for each input, I give you a world length of five. And it's working very, very swiftly because if it's end of file, I say it's down. If it's empty, I say it's a continuation. I, I don't know, I have nothing to do. And if there is an element, I have a buffer and if the buffer uh, length match, I can dust out the buffer or make a continuation. So, with this, what I have is, is a very simple thing with, please start, yes, with very simple uh, words of five letters. It's the thing I produce with my stream. But what is interesting and what we need to do in all this kind of thing is composition. So the thing is, I can say I group string by qualifier word and after that I, I group this with the word aggregation. So what I obtain is a very simple thing. We group two words of five characters in just putting in the stream. Okay? Like this, what I what I like about iterati is you have the hand of what's happening because it's very strong, purely typed. In fact, I think it's purely functional. And you have a clear view of what is the type. And you can do the composition thing because the type is strong. But the problem with iterative, it's, it's not bidirectional. 
it's complicated to write it because the code is a little bit verbose and it's not trendy today because iterative is going to die. Why? Because a play framework will be relying on something else shortly and there is better way to do and manage stream. The way we do that today is Scala-Z stream. Who is users of Scala-Z? So Scala-Z is a very cool library of uh, lots of tools for functional programming inside Scala. Basically, when I start a Scala project, I add scala -Z to the dependencies and I'm happy. And they're working on something about stream. And uh, what is interesting about that, it's, it's only based on scala -Z basics. So you have all the pure functional of scala -Z things. All is based around something very cool called a process. And they made something simple to understand. They build the thing around the same as the collection API of Scala, like map, collect, filters, and all this kind of thing you already know. So I think it's one of the better things we can use uh, to the JVM right now. Uh, I have to, to do to you a demo, because this one, it's not a video. Can I speak to this one too? Yeah, sure. Okay. So basically, oh, it's okay. Uh, can you read it? Can you read it? Can you read it now? Okay. What I need is this example. Uh, I, I'm looking for a way to, to make this bigger. Okay, I want to make this bigger, please. I will just... It's not the same. What the fuck? Okay. Okay, this is my example. What we do is basically processing a file I created, taking all the Asimov books together and making in a big file. Okay? Uh, what we do is say, I want all the lines of this file. Uh, I will uh, add a new line character and print it to uppercase and print it to the, to, uh, I print, this is just, a f it's not very clean, but it's, uh, it can show to the developer it's happening something because we print dots every time we process a line. We pipe it to a process, we can take the text and put it in ETF uh, and code. And finally, we file chunk this to a new file, okay? Basically, this is the process we want to do. If we take, oh. what I propose, the, the, the main goal is to see if it's happening in real time. So what I can say is tell the Asimov to file. And what was new in the Asimov to file 
was print uh, in the same time as the screen. Just take another place there, and I start my application. The DVM is starting, so we load the project and it's running. And we can see all the strings of the of the lines are just to upper scale and print to the to, to the new file in real time. It's not like put it in memory and write it later. You can see we take the file in real time and push it to the new file. Okay? If we have a look at about this. Uh, yes, the, the bash system doesn't like this kind of stuff <laughs> because Asimov write, I don't know, a lot of books. <laughs> I, I think it's a, it's a text file of something like 20 megabytes. So it's a huge text file, okay? It's, it's why it's interesting for the demonstration. So it's worth, if we're doing, please, I will launch this in another terminal so I can kill it anytime. So, if you will count uh, the number of line of Azimov 2, we can see there is pretty much of lines. But what we can do to say it's very simple to manage the, the quantity of data and how you can be fluent with the APIs is say, okay, what we want to do is to be sure we only read like only the, the, the lines who is not empty. So we're not taking Is oh no, we we will do something very much fun. We will count only the nines with the word robot. Okay, so we say contains robot. So no, we can launch all new um, again the. Process. It's is it closed? Yes. So we tail the file as im of two, and what we need to do is relaunch the process, and this time we only print the lines with the robot inside it, and we see there is much smaller file there, and uh, if we tail count the file, we see there is only a 4,000 file. But in real time, we can use the, the, the collection API to do what we need to do on the stream. Okay? What's it's important about streamings is how it's bending with something else. So, what, what I just show you uh, about Scalazi stream is able to bind with HTTP through uh, a, a project called Neti Scalazi stream or another project very interesting called HTTP4S and HTTP4S is able to bind an HTTP uh, with a project called Blaze uh, with which a synchronous HTTP server very interesting and through servlet with the JT API and you, you choose what, what is the backend you are using. And there is other thing like s -codec you can use, which is basically um, a parser combinator library to working on binary with Scala. But the problem with Scala's stream is sometimes we need to talk with others, like other friends of, uh, on top of the GFM. And I don't want to be rude with these guys, but they have a very shitty uh, type system expressivity. So, and the other thing is for 
obvious or political reasons uh, we can push the Scala Z streams as the best way to do in Scala. In the same times, uh, we try to do something like Scala is simple, please come, we're the nice guy, something like that. Okay? So, there is why people create the reactive stream. Reactive stream is an API for all GVM language and platform to build some very interactive stream on top of the platform. So you can use reactive stream with Java, you can use it with Groovy, you can use it with almost everything because the API is able to be understandable by every language. And in Java, uh, in Scala world, we have something very cool called Ata Aka Stream. And Aka Stream is the API for making stream processing on top of Aka. What is interesting is we will use the power of Actor system to make reli reliable system of uh, Aka streaming processing. Okay? So, this is very cool. Uh, it's currently my stone 5. It's out yesterday, so um, I will use my stone 4 for the demonstration. But um, the thing is, I will show you how it's working. Uh, Aka Stream, I've been thinking to process a lot of data on top of uh, the Scala uh, system. Uh, with Aka Stream, we start to beginning to, to say, okay, this is the operation I want to make on data. There is two operations there, only print. Print is something we can do with any type. So I made the function parametrical. And uh, the other thing is to uppercase, which is a function able to do like uppercase all the string, okay? And we start beginning like we take a flow of a type and we map on it because uh, as Scala streams they use a lot like collection library kind of uh, things. Okay. When we want to start a flow, what we do? Here comes the dragons, implicit everywhere. For the beginning, we start an actor system, then uh, we import a dispatcher, uh, like an execution context, all, all the things we, we really like in Scala, so we have implicits everywhere. And we build a flow materializer. In fact, you have many ways you can handle a flow of uh, streams in Aka stream. The, the basic thing is to using an actor flow, but you can also build something relying on, I don't know, thread pool on anything else. Then you import more implicit. And uh, what we do is, the, this is a very simple demonstration. We do exactly the same thing than taking a file with all the azimuth and put it in a source. So. Source is very important on Aka stream. It's the beginning of the flow. Then we have an out. In this case, the out is quite simple. So it's just ignore. And we can build a flow graph around that saying, OK, I take the data from there. I put it in the thing we built before, like the two uppercase, then the print thing. Then we out it. And like the other, we start the flow. OK? Not so much complicated. What I can do is demo again. If somebody understand why you want absolutely to kill my show with problems like okay so everybody can everybody can read cool what I 
what I am doing in this case, uh, we're starting a new thing on the floor. Like, um, we, str we, we jointly get the, the, the file lines, but I, I, what I want to do there is show you, you can do something interesting with the flow, like merging and splitting the flow. So I create a broadcast. A broadcast is something when I put data in, it can be output in many, th in many times. And a merge, which is basically a place with um, a stream can converge and be zip. Okay? So if I take my source, I will broadcast it to uppercase, then merge, then print. And when I take the broadcast, and I, I'm ready to merge right now. What's it's interesting there is with this, I will have lines of uh, uppercase and the lines of normal case of the book, okay? So if I start this, Like it's a play application. For the demonstration, I, I build it inside a play application because Akka is already present in the play application, so you can build your data flow inside a play application for some reasons. I have to start the play application. Then you can see there is the flow running with the two uh the 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 two things like ancienne de la terre monsieur and the way with upscale so here is the way the two flow i like building together inside the 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 application it's it's really cool isn't it no <laughs> why is interesting because if you think about that, there is many possibilities. You are in a play application, so you can, for example, grab data from RabbitMQ because there is kind people who write uh, an adapter for the ICA stream system through through the for 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 other, the glue with the RabbitMQ system. You can pass the event. So wh what I described there is uh, uh, something we built at Clever Cloud. At Clever Cloud, we have a problem. Um, when you launch your application, there is an event in the RabbitMQ system. Then we know your application starts its deployment. Then we know your application has finished the deployment. Then we know the application is successful or failed. Then all these kind of stuff are just event. And what we want to do was just a notification inside your application system doing that, okay, application is redeploying, it's successful, it's failed, it's something like that. For doing this, it was a little bit complicated because all events are on the same RabbitMQ database, but we push it into uh, the event database. So we, we, we follow the stream. But every event we have, we need to know for who is it. Because uh, we, we have plenty of users, we can send uh, all the events to all the users. So we need to f do a check with the database uh, access control list, then find if the user have a WebSocket open on the system, then push the event to the WebSocket. And all of this is doing only using the ACA stream system. Do I have, I have the time to show you that? I think it's PowerPoint. It's every time it, it's a product from Microsoft. For example, think uh, you you running a new actor system, 
then you have the connection to the RabbitMQ system. Um, this is quite complicated code, but basically what we do is create exchange bindings on Q to RabbitMQ system, and all these calls are made by future, so you have to wait, it's done, so basically don't look at this. And when it's completed, uh, you have a source with a connection to the data, to the RabbitMQ system, then control the buffer strategy, and an out with it's basically the WebSocket dispatcher pool. And what we do, it's so simple, we create a new flow graph when we have a json ify flow, which is basically a flow able to, to, to get something with a delivery by RabbitMQ, push it in a consumer mapping, which is something would unwrap all the Rabbit and IMQP protocol, put it in something would transform it in a JSON, and this is a part of the flow. But when we create it, we say, okay, we have a source, we json all the data, and then we, we pass the data through the RCL system, and we collect it for only the people who have interesting things to do. And collect is like, is like you, have a, you have the same thing like in a, in a collection, so it's so simple. And the out is the WebSocket dispatcher pool. And it's on a play application, so after this, it's a play application, uh, actual system of WebSockets who are handling it. And basically, if you look at this, it's a very simple code. It's not complicated to do all the stuff I, I just say to you. Just imagine if you have to do this in C++ with all the imperative stuff. So, I hope I convinced you to use uh, some streaming on top of Scala. Um, basically, uh, if you are thinking about all the, 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 the choice uh, I show you there, uh, there is something cool called Iterati. It's very cool for learn, and if you need to act now with play application on streaming, you have to use it, like if you want to make some HTTP stuff uh, with play, you have to use uh, the Iterati stuff. So, sorry, you have to learn it for about six months, <laughs> because in play three, there will be not be Iterati again. Uh, Play 3 will rely on Aka IO, will rely on Aka Stream. Okay? So, this is the underlying things. You have uh, Scala Z Stream, it's beautiful design. Uh, it's the, the most Scala ish thing, uh, I think. It's very cool, but uh, a, le a little bit confidential. And Aka Stream will be the enterprise compatible thing, you know, that, like it's type safe, you can be trusted. And the ecosystem is quite wide, uh, and it's reactive stream ready, so you can use application and library part of, of the thing. So I hope, uh, like now, uh, data streaming is a lot trendy. Uh, I want to uh, thanks a lot to uh, Clement Delafra, who was I working with, because we're working on streaming stuff together all the time. And uh, it's time for a question. And uh, I, I give you just a free coupon for Clever Cloud if you want to try it. And uh, sure, I have some cool stickers too. So thank you for your time. Some question? Yes. Okay, so the question, uh, I have to, to repeat the question for the video. The question is about the performances, all, all the stuff. Um, basically, uh, it depends on what you're using on C++. Because if you are using a lot of, I don't know, buffer system, well done with zero copy stuff on the very low level, I, I, I'm sure you can beat uh, Java and Scala on all this kind of stuff. But the point is not there. The point is, all you can 
express what you need to do on the data on the stream and do your job with readable code and and working and able to clusterize. So basically, yes, we build some benchmarking. Uh, performances are quite very good, but what is very good? It's depending on what, what you are doing in your job. If you are doing low latency trading in London, uh, I'm pretty sure there is better way to do that. Uh, but uh, if your job is doing a web application with deployment system, for example, at Clever Cloud, uh, the bottleneck is definitely not uh, Scalazi stream. Uh, it's, 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 it's somewhere else. So I'm pretty sure what you need to do is to implement this kind of solution inside your software. And when you have a problem of performances, fix the problem of performances. But performances is not the main choice. But it performs very well. Yeah. Other question? Yeah, sure. The parallelism, uh, so the question is about how the parallelism is made on the Scala On the Scala stream, in fact, it's pretty interesting. Um, like the flow materializer of Aka stream, you can change the backend of management of your stream. So basically, you can, you can imagine in just a few months, uh, somebody takes the time to make the glue between the Scala Z stream and the Hacker stream to use the Hacker stream uh, at the bottom. There is an actor, I, I think there is an actor materializer for the Scala Z stream right now operating. Uh, but basically, I, I think the default way is a threading system that they use a Scala Z stream inside it. So, like the other thing, you can change. The, the the way that the parallelization is made uh, by just changing the configuration of of your project. In fact, it's it's one of the very interesting thing is there is the way you have to process the stream with the receipt. There is the way you get the stream inside it with basically a driver to get the stream inside, and there is the way you will execute the receipt. And every component are just like piece of Legos, so it's it's so cool, yeah. Another question? Uh, at Clever Cloud, the solution we're using uh, right now. Um, in fact, and there is a reason why I give you the example of the uh, of the stuff. Uh, our old projects, uh, like we 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 using a lot of streaming stuff, like for two years now. So all the old project I made by Iterati, because it it it, it was the only solution. Uh, right now, what we are doing is using massively uh, Aka Stream, uh, and for some project where it's more like analysis system and unless something like you have to interact with the web and things like that, we're using Scala Z streams because Scala Z streams are more expressivity than the ACA stream system. So you can you can be more expressive on what we are doing on the data and for some reasons we're using it in, in some times. Yeah. So basically we're using the three. But it's, it's more a point of view about programming. Like you know, it's it's why I say it's using stream on top of Scala because you are just to think about just making streams of data and not compute give the answer. It's the basic thing of the, of all the process. There is another question. Cool. So I'm in time. <laughs> I was very afraid to, to, to show a three framework on one talk. Uh, so I'm so sorry if I can be maybe a little bit quick <laughs> on this. Okay? Thank you very much.
And yes, it's a sticker, you can have it. 